And welcome to part 2 of Zero's playthrough in Mega Man X4. By defeating Magma Dragoon, we got Ryuinjin. Zijinjin. <laughs> it's basically a sure you can type attack where Zero manages to turn his saber into a flame saber, and he like swipes upwards into the sky. And, uh, you know, it's damn awesome. And the good news about Zero, he has unlimited energy. These moves he can do, he can do forever as long as he wants. So, you know, a fully maximized Zero is a god. A fucking god, I say. As always, the heart tank is up there. So use your Ryu in Jin Jin Jin, whatever the hell it is, <laughs> to break the ice and get the heart tank. Zero has a whole bunch of moves that he gets that are just... I can't even pronounce them. I could try, but it's not happening. One thing I didn't mention earlier in the past playthrough, or Extreme 2, is the fact that in X3, when we saw Dr. Kane, that was the last time. We're never going to see Dr. Kane again. Dr. Kane, the guy who invented Reploids and found X, and, you know, was like the founder of the Maverick Hunters and all this jazz, he was supposed to be like the Mega Man X equivalent to Dr. Light. And for some reason, X4 and onwards, they didn't want to bring back Dr. Kane. I don't know why. The last appearance Dr. Kane's ever made was in the Day of Sigma anime they made for, Mag for Maverick Hunter X. And in that anime, it almost implied that he got killed in an explosion for some reason, even though we clearly know he's alive in X2 and X3. Uh, for what I've been reading on the Mega Man wiki, apparently Dr. Kane died of old age at some point during the series, but it's never really referenced in any of the games. No one ever mentions him again. So I don't know what happened there. They just sort of gave up on Dr. Kane. Oh yeah, sub-boss, weak against the fire attack. Go figure. <laughs> Makes quick work of him. I could be playing this yeah, Zero playthrough a lot quicker than I am with X. Mainly because, you know, doing a second playthrough is boring. It's hard to come up with commentary for a level you've played before. And, you know, it's the same deal for the viewers. You don't want to see everything as slow as it was before. You just want to get on with it. But uh, Zero is a powerhouse because not only does he have to be in close in to guys when you want to hit them, but his Z-Saber just goes everywhere. X shoots in a straight line, and that straight line is good when you're facing guys, but you know, sometimes you have to keep jumping or you have to maneuver yourself in a way that just makes the X Buster more convenient, and sometimes that's just not easy to do. Zero, however, he swipes upwards, he swipes downwards, he swipes all around him. So anything in his vicinity pretty much just gets raped by the Beam Saber, and that's what I love playing Zero for. Anything I walk up in front of, it dies. <laughs> Nothing escapes my Beam Saber. They all feel my evil wrath. I love playing at Zero. And it's not because he was made by Dr. Wily. I mentioned in a few LPs that I love playing the villain in every game I play. When I play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, I go dark side. When I played Spider-Man Web of Shadows, I loved the symbiote suit. It turned Spider-Man into a dumb a or a j It turned him into an asshole, but I didn't care. I wanted to be the asshole. But just because Dr. Wily built Zero doesn't mean I appreciate him more than X. That's in no way relevant. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> What's that blonde kid up to? I don't have time for you, Junior. Hey, shut up and fight already. Oh, that does it. You're going down. Frost Walrus, of course, weak against the fire blade. You hit him, he slides across the room, then he just keeps walking, you hit him again. And that's uh, pretty basic. So basically all you want to do is hit him with the flame attack, keep hitting him as he's sliding, then jump to the other side. And I think at half health, or at least when the third time you hit him with the flame attack, he'll create this gigantic icicle which will break off into other icicles that try and land on you. But because he takes so long doing this, and because he's such a slow character to begin with, Frost Walrus is a pretty easy maverick to beat. 
If you want to take him on first, why not? He's a good candidate. He's simple as fuck. <laughs> but I digress. Yeah! By defeating Frost Walrus, we get Hyuret Swan. It's basically an icicle sword that we can use, but it's uh, a dive attack. So basically, enemy, enemy, bleh. Any enemy we're standing or we're jumping over, if we push down and the triangle button, we'll create this ice sword and we'll fall downwards and impale whatever's below us. It's not going to be that great for fighting Jet Stingray, but, uh, you know, it'll help anyway. Oh goody, the dreaded jet bike sequence I love oh so much. As always, your jet bike can shoot, it can dash, it can jump, and it doesn't take bottomless pits well. <laughs> there's no stopping, there's no braking, you have to constantly keep moving, and if you don't like it, too bad, deal with it. This level has a heart tank and a sub tank, and boom, there's the heart tank right there. It takes some precision dashing to get it. But at least this level isn't as unbearable as a certain X5 level where you have to get every special energy capsule in order to get the Dr. Light capsule. But you know, now I'm just jumping ahead of myself now, aren't I? But yeah, I don't get why Dr. Kane isn't in the series anymore. I guess they didn't want anything to do with him, or Capcom, maybe, maybe they just forgot about him. Maybe when they were making X4, they wasn't the same people who made X1s through 3, so they were like, uh, Dr. Kane, who's that? You know? <laughs> you just sort of got written out of the storyline. I don't know why, but okay then. It's not like I'm a huge fan of Dr. Kane or anything, it's just very odd, you know? That's like if in Mega Man 4, uh, Roll just disappeared off the face of the earth. Mega Man's sister wouldn't just disappear off the face of the earth. People would be going, what happened to Roll? Oh, she got a career. She's in television now. She just sort of left, you know. It's all good. <laughs> Apparently people thought Zero was Roll when he was when he first came out in Mega Man X. Or at least he was supposed to be the upgraded equivalent of Roll, but uh, that just sounds retarded. Anywho, folks, it's Jet Stingray. Now, because uh, X could do the Frost Shield, and that was awesome for him, because he could always hit him wherever he was. Zero's Frost Weapon only aims downwards, so all we can do is stand behind him, keep jumping, and uh, when this blue enemies he sends at us come around, we just swipe them out of the, s out of the sky, and you know, that's about it. Jet Stingray loves to dash from one side to the other, however, and if we're on the other side of wherever he is and he dashes under us, we can then use the frost shield. Or if he leans down into the ground, we can because we can still stand behind him because apparently he doesn't think to hug a wall. And we can still frost shield his ass and uh, it's all good, folks. He's uh, definitely a little bit more challenging with Zero, but even still... As you can tell by my inability to get hit here, he's a pretty easy maverick, and I wouldn't have any worry warts fighting this guy. Fuck you, Stingray. Yeah! We learned! Hyunkyakyu, whatever the hell that says. <laughs> we can now do the air dash. Okay, just say you learned air dash, really. That's all it is. There's nothing else to it. It's an air dash. We can now air dash. whoop de doo <laughs> And uh, air dashing doesn't exactly hurt Mavericks, so I'm just attacking Slash Beast for the fuck of it. You know, air dash doesn't hurt Slash Beast. Nothing I have hurt Slash Beast. But uh, I'm still going in the correct order that it was with X, so why the hell not? Yeah, Zero has this weird thing where he doesn't actually get weapons sometimes. He always just gets new abilities that make him stronger and a better fighter overall, but, you know. See you in part three.